Welcome to Watercolor Lessons with Kathy. I'm Kathy Nichols, and I'm a lifelong artist, painter, and teacher. I help students of all ages tap into their creativity with watercolor. Watercolor is a great way to express yourself, and it's easy to get started and fun to do. I hope you join me to learn how to paint with watercolor. I can't wait to see your paintings. To send me photos of your creations, email them to the address in the description. Welcome to the next lesson in our Wood Duck series. One of our very popular videos was the Wondrous Wood Duck lesson. Today, we'll paint a beautiful wood duck resting on a log. Wood ducks have fantastic colors and markings, and I love seeing and painting them. We'll use three brushes, nine paints, and eight techniques. To better enjoy the lesson, you may wish to use the same paints and materials as I do. Watch my video, Best Materials for Beginning Watercolor Artists, to see where to get them. The link to the video is in the description and in the corner. Be sure to check below for more useful information and links. Let's get started and paint some watercolor. Let's get started. Take your spray bottle, wet your pans of paint, put some water on your palette. Okay, we will be using a template today. Here's my template, and it's a duck that will be sitting on a log. And the log it's going to go along this way. Take your liner brush, load it with ochre, and outline your template. Okay, so there's the outline of my duck. And if you feel like there are some areas that it's dark and you don't want those lines to show, you can use water and fade them a little bit. I'm going to do that right here on this part because this part of the duck is more white. I do want a little faint line of color. Okay. And that's a little dark there. Okay. Now let's start with the head. So here's the beak, and on the beak, there's a yellow right on the bridge of the beak. So let's start by filling that in. 
So the yellow starts down here and comes up and back down like that. Okay, and let's use some of that yellow, cadmium yellow, with the feet here. And there's a little bit of a spike. And the other, other one, right here. Okay. Now, take your liner brush loaded with ochre and the duck is sitting on a log. So I'm gonna sketch that in, that ochre. There's a stray branch going out that way. I need to come down like that. Soften the line and spread that color so there's a light shade of ochre on the log. <clears throat> Okay, now let's, if you look at the beak, let's put a yellow circle where the eye is going to be. So it's a little past the yellow, about right there. Making a yellow circle right there. Okay. Now the neck here, there's a white spot, and then below is a brown color, kind of a rusty, and a good color to use for that for the base is the burnt sienna. So take your liner brush and load with burnt sienna. And right on the start of the breast, that color starts. And then you want to bring it down and around like this. And then when it gets closer to the feet, it's not solid. It's a little sporadic. Put some straggly feathers that are that color. Okay, and then this color comes up in the back. There. Now, right here is the start of the wing. And this bird has a very interesting head and that the feathers are long and they kind of get flip like a ducktail. So there's a space that is in between here and I don't want to fill that in. So bring that color like that. And load your brush as needed. It's a little bit white. Like so. Okay. 
now let's work on there's a black spot right past the eye a little bit right here so let's mix some of our load your liner with burnt umber and ultramarine blue and right here is a white line and then it comes down you don't want to go all the way to the neck and then go up and then come back down here. Now this light I don't like but I'm just gonna smooth it out with water and this white line on the duck carries down. I want it to a little more white there so I'm going to take my paper towel and blot it out a little bit here. Now this part right here is going to be where the green and the bluish color is. So go ahead and take your liner brush and use sap green with some ultramarine blue and we're going to fill in the spot around here. And then come up around the eye. Like that. Completely around the eye. But leave a little white space there. Now, there's a white space a little above this green, and you want to leave a white space and then bring that green color down by the yellow beak here. to the top of the head. And with that same color, I need to make some more paint here, which is a sap green in the ultramarine blue. I'm going to carry that color down here where the feathers are. Now there's some white streaks, so you want to leave a white streak, one along here, and one about there. And then the feathers actually touch part of the wing here. Carry that color like so. Okay. Let's give it a good dry before we do anything else.
now that it's dry, let's work on, now this part here, it's a little dark, so I want to lift some of that paint out. Okay, that's better. Now there's a little blue in that cheek, so take your liner brush and load it with intense blue, just a dab. And I'm going to put a dab of the blue. Like so. Now, the eye is really a orange red color. So load your liner with cadmium red and fill in the yellow spot. I'm leaving some of the yellow showing through. Okay. I'm going to let that dry a little bit and come back to the beak here. Now this beak is a little bit of a faint yellow. So go ahead and load your brush with cadmium yellow. And Add another layer to that beak. So it gets that bright red, bright yellow color, I mean, excuse me. Now, below the beak, it's a bright reddish orange. Take your liner brush and load it with cadmium red. And go below the beak. And if it runs with the yellow, that's okay. I give it an interesting twist there. And on the beak, the, it comes down further on the beak, the orange color. A little bit on the other side here. Okay, now on the beak, the very tip, there's a dark color, almost a black. So let's make that color by loading your brush with burnt umber and your ultramarine blue. So on the tip, caps off, and then their nose has a little tip to it. Now the black runs below underneath the beak, like that. And continues up all the way up to the orange there. Now since I have that color, I'm going to darken this patch here. Okay, and since we have this dark color, and we had time for this bright orange to dry, let's add the dark part of the eye in the middle, like so. Okay, 
And there's the feathers in the head there get a little dark in the back here, casting the shadows. So you can add some where the green is. Like so. Okay, let's come down to where the wing is here, and there's a lot of color in the wing of this bird. So, right here starts kind of a gold color, which is similar to the ochre color. So, take your liner brush and load it with ochre. And there's just a patch about that big. Go ahead and fill in that area. Now above that wing, I'm going to work on this area here, and there's a lot of shapes and colors. So let's start at the tip. There's some blue. So take your liner brush and load it with the ultramarine blue. I'm going to start on the tip there. And then bring it a little bit here, like so. Now, there's still some blue off here, and there's some little white, so don't fill in that. Leave some white space. And it comes down here, and then this spot here almost turns black, but I'm going to build a base of blue on it and then use a darker color to make it black. And then right below that, there's some patches of the bright, bright blue. And to get that bright blue, we're going to switch blues, clean your brush, and use the intense blue. And there's like three kind of blocks. There's one, the biggest one. There's a second, and then there's another one right here. Okay, so now the area below here is darker, and it's almost a bluish black color. So let's mix some of our intense blue with a touch of the umber. And we're going to start down here and come this way. Now, among this, about right here, There is some patches of bright orange color, similar to the color of the beak. 
So let's clean your liner brush. And load your liner with cadmium yellow. And this has a little yellow tinge to it, so we want to add some cadmium yellow to that one. And there's just three kind of stripes. Now that's starting to run in that. And we can stop it by just dabbing it. Okay, you might want to stop for a moment and dry it. Okay, I'm going to go back in my liner and add a little more of that color. So load your liner with cadmium red and a touch of the cadmium yellow. And then since you have that color, if you can go back to the beak here and brighten that beak a little bit, like so. And then I notice the color right there kind of ran. I didn't want it to do that. So you can take your mixture and I want to change the color a little bit to add some contrast. So you can mix burnt umber with your ultramarine blue. And I'm going to pull that in to make it a little darker, like this cast of the upper shadow from the wings. Okay, so right here, there's some white and there's some black. So since I already have some of that mixture, I'm going to go along here and kind of make some lines. This bird has so many different colors in the feathers. It's just amazing and wonderful. Okay, so the dark right here is going to continue up. So I want to continue using that dark color around this way and bring it down. Like that and then bring this up around the blue. And then up this way. Still using your liner. I'm Mixing some of that burnt umber and ultramarine blue. And we want to carry some of the darkness here. And we separate the blue spots there. Okay. 
And then there's a white kind of a band here. Like that. Still sticking with the same mixture here. I'm going to bring it into the blue here. Bring it. Now, right here, some of that burnt sienna color comes back into play. So go ahead and load your brush with that color and fill it in. A little below here too. A little bit down here and his underbelly, the underbelly here is more white. So I'm just going to leave impressions of the feather. Now I see this ochre is carried onto the tip here. So take your liner brush, load it with ochre, and carry that all the way to the tip of the black. Now the, now I'm going to stop and give it another good dry. Okay, let's take our round with pointed tip brush. Now I want to intensify the browns here, here and up here. So take your round with pointed tip brush with burnt umber and some burnt sienna, burnt sienna and burnt ember. Easy to get those two mixed up. I'm going to add some here. And a little up here. Now, there are some white feathers here, but not all the way up here. So we're going to thin that line down. Now, to make that color darker, I really need to dry it again. And since I'm working in a small area, I find it's useful to use the 
liner brush. Again, using the mixture of burnt umber and burnt sienna. Now, I don't like how this is not connected, so I'm going to fill this part in. Bring this dark brown color down. Like so. Okay. Now, and this needs to come up. And now we need to create some a little shadow in the neck. So using our mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt umber. I have a little bit right here. Let me check. It's not quite it. Mix, load your liner with burnt umber and ultramarine blue. Just a little bit. And we put a little bit shadow up in there. Not much. Just like that. Now let's look down on the feet here. They're a little bit light. And now we want to add some shadow. So let's take some cadmium yellow, still with your liner brush, and add some cadmium red. Make it a brighter yellow orange color. And, well, you don't want to fill in the whole spot. You want to create some shadows here. So I'm coming along the back of it. And do the same on the other one. Now this one on this side is a little bit darker than the other. There's some of the paint. Okay. Now I'm going to let that dry a little bit. Okay. Now I notice on this, this one is a little bit fat, swollen leg here. I'm going to fix that swollen leg. So you can wet the area and dab some out. So I'm taking more of the mixture. I dab that out and just gonna add this darker here. Okay. 
Now, I'm gonna come back to this. I know it doesn't look so great right now, but sometimes it helps to go to another part of your painting and come back to it. So the bird is sitting on a log right here. So let's work on the log a little bit and load your liner with bird umber. I'm even leaving a little white space there. There's a some light hit it, so there's a lighter color there. Now I'm going to take a moment and give it a good dry. So now I'll go back and work on these feet here. Mixing some cadmium yellow, cadmium red, and I'm going to add a touch of burnt umber. Make it a darker orange. That looks better. Okay. So this duck is sitting on a log and there is water in the background. So we'll use the wash technique. And there is a debate out there whether you want to start with a paper dry or the paper wet. Let's start with the paper wet. So you'll take your mop brush and get it wet, clean, and just have water on it and wet the paper around the duck. And you could go and wet the whole paper, but with this, you can start with this area. So I'm just going to wet this half and then come back and do that part on the other side of the deck. So you will want to take your mop brush and I'm going to clean an area here. There's a little bit too many, too much browns. And every once in a while, you'll need to do that. Okay.
So take your mop brush and load it with intense blue with a touch of sap. and start spreading it with your mop brush, spreading the water. Now if it's too bright, you can put water on your brush, try to dilute it, and then spread the paint. And I like to dab for a little texture. So sometimes when you're doing a wash, it's hard to do large areas until you practice and get better at it. So I find starting with smaller areas is helpful. Okay, I like the faint faintness of this. But I see that I need a little more by the duck here. like so and you take a little further in here and if you don't like where it pulls and puddles that's where you want to go at okay now let's go to the other side clean your brush a little bit We'll want to start with clear water to wet your paper. Don't forget between the feet there. And then go ahead and load your brush with your mop brush with intense blue and that touch of sap. And then on the top here, you can just extend your brush stroke and that will activate the water here. Now, and then you can blend in the other side. It's such a small area that it's easy to blend by 
me wetting the paper there. Let me see, it's a little dark. Like that. So keep dabbing where you think it needs it. And you can also wet your brush to dilute that spot. It's too dark. Okay. Now let's give it a good dry. Okay, now I want to make more definition on the log, and in this log there's a branch sticking out here. So the log here to me is a little bit too faint. So we'll take our liner brush. Mix burnt sienna, burnt umber, and put some on the log there. Now, here's, you can see the faint line of where I had my branch sticking out from the log. I want to make that a little darker, so use the mixture of burnt sienna, burnt umber, and a touch of the ultramarine blue. That looks a little blue to me, so I'm going to add more burnt umber. And that's one of those scraggly branches that you see in a tree. That, there. And I want to add some of that darkness in the wall. Just kind of experiment and spread that paint around. And then right below his feet, there's a little bit of that color. So use some of the mixture you have here on your palette. On each side, just a little bit cast of the shadow. 
like so. Then give it a good dry. Then take a look at your painting and evaluate if you need to do something more or not. And it's amazing with paintings that you just know when you look at it that it feels right. And um, one of the things with watercolor most people say is that it's easy to overdo. So that's why it's good to stop and look. And I'm stopping and looking at my duck and he looks happy. And I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thanks you for joining me. I enjoyed painting with you today, and I hope you enjoyed it too. I'd love to see photos of your creations. You can email them to me at the address in the description. To suggest something you'd like to paint, please let me know in the comments. If you'd like to give watercolor a try, please subscribe to my channel and take a lesson or two. Please join me next time when we'll paint another interesting subject. Take care, be safe, and see you soon.